So it's official, Nahida is getting a rerun and naturally the big question is, should you get her? The answer is yes, the answer will always be yes. We're here with Nahida and Masanori. Now the thing about Nahida is that she really is, without a shadow of a doubt, the Lord of Dendro. And I don't just mean in the story, I also mean in the game because every single Dendro team and every permutation of a Dendro team really likes having Nahida, whether she's the only Dendro or whether she's one of a bunch of Dendros in there. Everyone likes having Nahida on their team. So in order to make this video not 15 minutes long, I'm just going to spend some time looking at three particular teams that I really like to play with Nahida. So the first one is what I call international. It's not the international that you think of, but it's basically a Quicken team. A lot of Quicken in this team. So in this team, Nahida, usually I play her as an off-field Dendra character, but the fun fact about this team is that it's so flexible that you can totally play her as an on-field Dendro. So I will do exactly that. Normally I play off-field Dendro, like I said. So this is a little bit unusual to what I normally do. We'll get Miko back. We'll do a Lisa Nuke. Heal with Baiju and all that good stuff. So in a team like this, Nahida can do quite a lot of damage, even if she's off field. It's just that Nahida tends to do a bit more damage when she's on field because of her ult. It actually shares EM to the current active player. And then of course, the next team that I really, really like playing with Nahida is of course, Nilu teams. And for those who are avid Nilu enjoyers, uh, I've heard from the grapevine that we might be getting some uh, local legends that come in pairs, which is going to be a real benefit for Nilu teams in the future as well. I don't know why my computer's lagging now, but that's okay. It helps that I have C6 Candice, so I actually have some more off-field Hydra application as well. But normally I also would play a team like this with off-field Nilu because Candace, well, I've built Candace to be a little bit more tankier than Nahida as well. And also she can do a lot of damage just as an on-field Bloom Driver. But the point is, in a Nilu team, you can absolutely play on-field Nahida if you want. You can also play off-field Nahida if you want as well. And finally, the team that I also like playing a lot with Nahida is of course, Thundering Dory. So this is a team that is effectively a Quick Bloom team. And Nahida is great in Quick Bloom and also Hyper Bloom shenanigans. Okay. Now in this team, I pretty much will play Nahida in an off-field sense. That is probably where her biggest strength lies. Is the fact that she is like one of the most universal off-field Dendro um, characters in the game. Won't use her ult because there's no need. But yeah, in a team like this, we basically have Nahida constantly applying Dendro, which allows Dory to do a lot of Electro reactions. And also we can generate some blooms with Farina, but it's an entire thing in and of itself. The point is that with Nahida and her really strong Dendro application, you have a lot of teams like Thundering Dory, like other Quick Bloom teams and even Hyper Bloom teams that can just really take advantage of that. And speaking of that strong Dendro application, there is actually one additional bonus team that I forgot to add. And then I added it a little bit later. Forward Vape Nouvellet, which is a team that showed up because Fontaine showed up. And I, this is still my favorite Nouvellet team, not gonna lie. So we're gonna do all of this. And of this team, yeah, the heater is 100% going to be an off-field Dendro application. So that we can get occasional big forward vapes. Thanks to the burning reaction. And now that Dahaya's field is inactive, we don't get that anymore. But through the use of Nahida's overwhelming Dendro application, we don't ever find ourselves with an underlying Hydra Aura, which means that when the Hyas field does its Pyro application, it will trigger burning. And that burning will be an underlying Pyro Aura for Nouvellet to do a forward vape tick on. And that forward vape means that on occasion, 
you'll see 72,000 damage just show up out of nowhere. And that's really, really nice. Ever since Nahida's last rerun, I'd say the main thing that has happened was Baiju's release. Baiju is a very interesting character because I do feel like Baiju can be a pretty solid alternative to Nahida uh, in a variety of Nahida teams. He is basically the Nahida that heals. That's what I mentioned in the Baiju rerun as well. Now, obviously, Nahida does have significantly better Dendro application than Baiju, especially in AoE situations. Nahida can apply AoE to everyone off field. Baiju doesn't do that. Baiju instead applies Dendro application to everyone with his skill, but like once. So that's a little bit different right there, right? But Baiju is better against waves of enemies because you don't actually need to swap back to Baiju in order for his Dendro application to still be a thing. This is something that you do need to do with Nahida, which is why Nahida is sometimes not necessarily the best choice if you're trying to play a team with someone who has some on-field requirements like Seno or even Alhatham to some extent, right? But as always, when someone shows up who is potentially a really nice alternative to that particular character, they end up getting played uh, in any way, and that's how you get maximum value out of both of them. Principal examples include Farina, Yelan, and Xing Chu, who's also about to try and pretend to be the new Hydro Archon with his new outfit, I'm just saying. Uh, we also have characters like Nico and Fischl, and then of course, recently we have Chevrus and... Mm. Actually, no, never mind. That's that's wrong. There is no one else. It's just Chevrous. Never mind. Hey guys, this is Kate, the editor. I should have remembered that, of course, it was an attack buffer who I was using as part of this pattern with Chevrous. And so obviously, it's Chevrous and Kujosara. Um, so as I showed in my previous demonstrations, I like playing Nahida and Baiju together. So just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to weapons, I don't think Nahida's weapon choices have changed all that much. Basically, if it's a 5-star weapon that you want, Kagura's or Thousand Floating Dreams is pretty much the idea. Uh, you could try and use Nivellet or Risley's Catalysts, but they're basically stat sticks at this point. Uh, you could otherwise just use some other DPS 5-star Catalyst. It'll be good. Not amazing, but it'll be good. In terms of the four stars, I think the Witsith is still the most goaded option for 10 seconds every half minute. Uh, Solar Pearl is still pretty decent if you have every intention of playing on field Nahida. Sat J could potentially be hilarious as well if you are trying to play off field Nahida because it is a big crit stat stick and you also get up to 80 EM out of that, which is nice because she does scale off EM a lot better. The HP bonus that you get from Sackjay though is going to be completely useless on her, so definitely save that particular weapon for someone like Nuvalet instead if you're going to do something like that. Otherwise, Hakushin is also a good choice. It is particularly good for Quicken teams, especially if you're playing on-field Nahida. So then if you're playing her more like that sort of spread hyper carry with an off-field Electro like Miko Fischl or even Lantern Lisa, then yeah, absolutely go for that. Uh, otherwise, other DPS 4-star options are okay, I guess. And <sighs> Magic Guide is still an option, but come on. <laughs> don't use a 3-star weapon on a 5-star character, and also don't use a 3-star weapon on an Archon. Come on, you can do better than that, okay? And when it comes to Nahida's artifact, I don't think that's really all that different to what it used to be. I mean, with the introduction of Fontaine, we did get the Golden Troop set, so if you want to do a lot more damage with a skill, Golden Troop is pretty good. So, yeah, you have an option. Otherwise, my personal recommendation, just stick her on Deepwood and move on. Because due to the nature of Nahida basically being an option on every single Dendro team, you will have a lot of teams that you might want to play with Nahida where she's the only Dendro character, and then you're going to have teams where she's not necessarily the only Dendro character. But either way, if you have Deepwood on her, she's good to go. You don't need to change. You don't really need to change her onto something else. So uh, I'm too lazy to swap and change her artifacts, and also we don't exactly have artifact loadouts yet. At least not the kind of artifact loadouts that I'm hoping for, which is like kind of what we have in Warframe. So look. <laughs> That's just not going to be something that I'm going to be changing myself. It also helps that I have one of the strongest Nahida builds. Not in Australia, mind you. Not just in Australia, but on the planet. So, there's not a chance that I will ever 
change Nahida out of that build into something else. She's going to be on Deepwood, and that's it. The alternative to Deepwood back in the day was also Gilded Dreams. Gilded Dreams really is for when you want to do a bit more damage with Nahida, at least a bit more than running Deepwood on her, but you don't have a Golden Troop set on her. I don't know, it doesn't really seem worth it in my opinion these days. If you want to do more damage, just Golden Troop, I guess. But yeah, I would still stick with Deepwood personally. And probably the most interesting thing about Nahida will still be the fact that her artifact stats are really, really malleable. Like, her sand should still be an EM sand. And then that's it. When it comes to her cup and when it comes to her hat, you could go for the usual Dendro or Crit option. Or you could go for EM. And that's an option too. So, if you have a look at the Akasha leaderboards, you'll find that among the top Nahida builds, you will have a combination of three EM builds, EM Dendro crit builds, even EM EM crit builds, which is what I have. I have an EM EM crit build. Strangely enough, I don't see any EM Dendro EM builds, at least not in the ones that I just had a brief look at. Uh, but that is also an option too. It just really depends on your weapon and I guess like your final stats like try to figure out the balance there the overall goal is to be under a thousand em but close to a thousand em or at least close to 800 em i guess because it really depends on also whether you're just going to be on fielding the heater or off fielding the heater and in terms of the heater's constellations first things first the heater doesn't need constellations when you get her at c0 she's already plenty strong you're pretty much good to go okay so you don't need to worry about Nahida's constellations. That being said, I have her at C2. So, I, I can at least give you some first-hand uh, experience on two of her constellations, and then I can kind of guess on the other two. So, C1 is actually useful. Don't let, let anyone tell you otherwise. The reason why is that there are, in fact, some teams where you will want to actually have that C1 bonus because you are missing that element in your team. So... If you're playing a Burnloy team, or if you're playing some other Burn Melt team, you're not going to have Electro characters in the team, usually. So that means that having C1 means that her skill is going to hit enemies faster. And because her skill doesn't have ICD, it's going to apply Dendro faster. So that's going to be really, really nice. So if you're trying to play a Burn Melt team, C1 is really, really good for that. C1 can also be useful in international international and other pure quicken teams uh, mainly because in those kind of teams where it is pure quicken or even quicken with like kaz for example uh you won't have a pyro or hydro character and so c1 does help increase her skill by a bit it's not a lot but it's a bit and then on top of that it will increase how long her ult sticks around for and that is actually very useful because her ult is the big em share that is like one of the integral parts of her kit so having the shrine of maya stick around for longer i think is actually really, really useful and therefore is something that you should potentially take advantage of by getting c1 so there we go and then finally in a hyper bloom team or in a quick bloom team uh her c1 won't necessarily be that valuable because you already have hydro and pyro characters but Maybe you only have one Hydra character, your Shrine of Maya can stick around for a little bit longer, and, you know, her skill will do a bit more damage, so, you know, it's not completely and utterly useless, but only for Quick Bloom and Hyper Bloom teams will getting her C1 not be all that valuable. Uh, C2 is busted. That's it. That's all I have to really say about that. Uh, with C2, I can see 70k Nilu Blooms on occasion. It's 20% of the time. And then with uh, C2 Nahida and Lisa, I can see 100k Lisa hits without C6 Sara. So, you know, think about that for a brief second. Like, that's kind of ridiculous. And then you chuck in C6 Sara, you're going to see even more damage. So, yeah. There's a lot of damage that comes out of having C2 Nahida. Uh, C4 Nahida can be pretty nice as well. It really depends on your build, but it is potentially up to 160 or 180, 160 extra EM. It's a lot of EM. And it's really going to help Nahida with her, her own damage, really. So, 
that's kind of nice. Uh, especially in AoE situations, it's going to scale up a bit faster because of how it works. And then finally, with C6, it's the usual just wipe everyone out. You basically look at it like it's C6 Yalan or, I guess, C6 Nivellette. It's just a constellation that just destroys everything. Now, is it worth the however much money you need in order to get C6 Nahida? Probably not. But if you really, really, really like Nahida, in much the same way that I really, really, really like Miko, yeah, go for it. Sure, why not? Who cares? So... Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Let's know Kusanali has been and probably always will be very, very strong. So if you ever see someone on YouTube with a video titled <coughs> Did Nahida Fall Off? <laughs> the answer is no. The answer will always be no. We haven't seen any new Dendro characters since Fontaine launched. So perhaps for the time being, there's a little bit of a gap. I could potentially see Nahida maybe losing a ton tiny bit of relevancy one day if someone shows up that is a little bit better than DMC uh, and can handle waves in an off-field sense better than Nahida. Maybe. Like, Baiju can kind of do that too, but mainly for single target shenanigans. It's more like the AoE shenanigans. That's where Nahida's big weakness probably is. And even then, it's not really that big of a weakness. So, yeah, she's still really, really good. She will always be really, really good, right? Uh, may all who wish for her be blessed with her wisdom. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to follow. Feel free to sub. If you're watching on YouTube now or in the future, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. Everybody hold I will have order. Flash! I see everything. Bow before me, worm. A minute, a minute. Burn! Seems like an emergency. A bit of hope. Start the front. I hold hands. Share my knowledge. Yes, yes. Now, we'll draw. Ready?